بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد The 25th juz after a page starts the surah called Surah Ashura and in the first few ayat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says تكاد السماوات يتفطرن من فوقهن وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ يُسَبِّحُونَ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّهِمْ That the heavens were about to rupture open above them and the angels are praising their Lord. وَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَ لِمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ And they are seeking forgiveness for those upon the earth. Here in one of the pillars of Iman that every Muslim has to believe in which without he is not considered a Muslim is believing in the angels that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created and we believe in them and we believe that they have souls they have intellect and Allah has mentioned some of their descriptions that they have wings and so on so everything which has been narrated regarding them we believe in and they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَيَفْعَلُونَ مَا يُؤْمَرُونَ And they only do that which Allah commands them to do. And we believe that there are different angels and that the different angels have been given different jobs such as Jibreel alayhi salam he was given the job of bringing down revelation. And then we have um, Israfil who will blow the trumpet and Mikael, who's in charge of rain and provisions. And we have the two who will come to the grave to question a person. And it's been narrated that their names are Munkar and Nakir. And they will ask a person, who is your Lord and who, who is your prophet and what is your religion? And also that Malik is the, one of the guardians of hellfire. And other angels that have been mentioned. And from the angels, there are, as Allah mentions here, some angels, what they do from their occupations is that they seek forgiveness for those upon the earth. And this reminds me of a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. A very famous hadith called Hadith of Abu Darda radiallahu an. And Ibn Rajab rahimahullah, he has a whole book explaining this, this hadith. And on my channel, I've gone through that book as well for anybody who wants to go through that. But... This hadith, the Prophet sallallahu he says, "Man salaka tariqan yaltamisu fihi ilman sahal Allah lahu bihi tariqan ila jannah." Whoever treads upon a path of seeking knowledge, learning about Islam, whoever goes out of his way to learn, when we say learn, I don't mean watch a two-minute clip here and there and act like you know everything. I mean you actually go, you go class, you uh, you memorize, you write down, you revise, you get tested, and so on. Just like you would do at school, or a university, or a college, where you go, you learn. Whoever does that, سهل الله له به طريقا إلى الجنة. Allah will make his path to Jannah easy for him. And you put your hand up if you want the easy way to go to Jannah. Inshallah, everyone. If anyone doesn't have the hand up, then there's a problem. So the Prophet is saying the easy way to go to paradise is by learning about the religion of Islam. And then the Prophet carries on in this hadith. Uh, and by the way, when he means tread upon the path of seeking knowledge, it includes both physically going out to travel, right? So maybe going to a different country or something like that. But if you're not able to physically go somewhere, then even being at home or your local masjid where you're revising, that also is included in this. The point is, is that you exert effort in trying to learn with whatever means that you have. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi he says that even the angels, they come down and they, or even the angels lower their wings for ridan li talib al-ilm, out of pleasure for the student of knowledge. SubhanAllah, even the angels, look, some angels, what do they do? They lower their wings for the student of knowledge. What does it exactly mean, lowering their wings? So, ulama differ slightly what it means. But the main thing is, I said, a form of glad tidings. 
that even the angels are doing this for a student of knowledge. And then, وَيَسْتَغْفِرُ لَهُ كُلُّ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ حَتَّى الْحَيْتَانِ فِي جَوْفِ الْمَاءِ And then, every single thing in the heavens and the earth, even the fish in the sea, even the whale in the sea, is making dua for the seeker of knowledge. SubhanAllah, what are all, all the fish doing? Making dua, seeking forgiveness for the seeker of knowledge. I remember once, I went to London, right? I went sightseeing and so on. And uh, near the London Eye, there was an aquarium. We went to that aquarium, right? And we saw all these fish and we saw these sharks. A bit disappointed, the sharks were quite small, but it's okay. And you can see them, you know, moving their mouth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he mentions in the Quran that the fish, they, and all these animals, what are they, what are they saying? They're doing tasbih of Allah, they are glorifying Allah. وَلَكِنْ لَا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِيحَهُمْ But you don't understand what they, you, you don't understand. But that's what they are doing. So I was just there and I was like, subhanAllah, all these fish that I can see in this small little aquarium, never mind the sea. The Prophet ﷺ told us in a hadith that all of these fish, plus all the ones in the oceans and the seas, all of them are doing istighfar for the student of knowledge. You know, who doesn't want to be that person that everything is making dua for him? And then the Prophet ﷺ finishes off this hadith and he says, uh, that the scholars, they are the inheritors of the prophets. They have inherited what the prophets have left behind. What have the prophets left behind? And the prophets, they did not leave behind dinar and dirham, meaning pounds and pennies and money. That's not what is being distributed. But what they left behind was Ilm, knowledge. So whoever takes that knowledge, then he's taken a, a, a good share. And subhanAllah, something happened, I went, uh, this was last year, last February, when I went for Umrah. And this story actually happened with, I think, uh, some of the Sahaba, maybe Abu Huraira radiallahu anh, and something similar happened with me. So basically what happened, it was COVID time, they were still a bit strict with the, the rulings and, you know, all of that. So they weren't allowing us to gather together in like a groups. Right? If you were standing meters apart, then they would. But if you were a group, the security guard would come and he would say, like, go, disperse. So anyways, um, I went into one of the offices in Masjid Nabawi. And alhamdulillah, I knew some of the workers there since when, I, since when I was studying. And I was able to get every single person on, on our group, some of the some Islamic books, some of the Mutun Talib al-Ain. Got them. And then, alhamdulillah, because I knew a few, I got some special editions as well that like they keep in the back and so on. So we got all of them. I came out with the bags. And then I started giving it out to everyone. And as they were all around me, the security guard comes from far. He's like, oh, you can't, you can't be together. You can't be together. Go, go, go. You can't be together. Then when he came closer, he saw that I was giving our books. So then he said to me, he said, as a joke, he said, uh, oh, I thought you were giving out money. Hence why everyone was surrounding around you. And then I said to him, uh, this is better than money. This is the inheritance of the prophets that I'm giving out. And then he just smiled, he nodded, and then he started making dua for us and, and so on. And that's, I think, Abu Huraira radiallahu did the same thing. Abu Huraira, he came into the masjid, or he came into, no, sorry, he came into the supermarket. And he said, uh, in, the uh, inheritance is being uh, distributed in the masjid, go, 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 go get it. And the people went, and when they came back, they said, what are you about? We, didn't, people, we just saw people uh, reciting Quran and reading, and there was some sheikh teaching, that's all we saw. And he said, that's the inheritance of the prophets. That's what they have left behind. So learning about the religion, actually learning about the religion, not this one sheikh said this and some little clip here, one Instagram post that this certain person made. That's not knowledge. Knowledge is when you actually go, you sit down, you memorize and you revise, you get tested, you move up book by book. That's seeking knowledge. Person can claim to be early hadith all day long. How many hadith you memorized? None. Where's, where's the where's that zeal for, for learning hadith then? You know, so alhamdulillah, you know, even as after Ramadan, inshallah, we do have plans that we want to start a proper course where, which alhamdulillah, I've got checked by many of the ulama, where a student can start from the basics. And by the end, inshallah, they'll graduate from this little course and they'll have a similar amount of knowledge to somebody who graduated from the university, inshallah. Everyone here, I'm saying it now because we have more people here, so I don't want anyone with the excuse 
saying I never heard about it. But inshallah, after Ramadan, once we do announce it, I want to see everyone there, uh, inshallah. And it is later on in the surah, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Allahu yabasutu rizqa liman yasha'u wa yaqdir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the one that he gives out his provisions to whom he wills. And these provisions is not only relating to wealth, it's also knowledge, it's also iman, it's also children, any type of blessing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the one that distributes it to everybody. And then later on Allah says, وَلَوْ بَسَطَ اللَّهُ الرِّزْقَ لِعِبَادِهِ لَبَغَوْ If Allah was to give everything to, to the people, what, what would the people do? لَبَغَوْ They will start to transgress, they will start to corrupt. And those blessings will be a proof against them on the Day of Judgment. So sometimes you might see, you might say to yourself that why is it that somebody's got something else and I don't have that much uh, or something like that. But the reality is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you mentioned Al-Alim, He's all-knowing. Al-Hakim, all-wise. And Al-Adil, He's just. So whatever He's given you is that which is best for you in your situation. If you were given a little bit more, maybe that could have been the means of your destruction. You know, and now on social media, you know, you see these videos. Today actually, I saw a video in the morning of... I think the person was in a laundrette and he was walking out and two minutes, oh, sorry, not two minutes, but five seconds after walking out, uh, one of the washing machines blew up. Somebody may have left something in their pockets or something like that. Right? So something like that. Or if somebody's got a good car and let's say the car breaks down and he doesn't drive that car, you might think it's a calamity that's befallen me. But in reality, it's a blessing. Allah saved you from, from something worse that could have taken place. And then after a few ayat after that Allah says, وَمَا أَصَابَكُم مِّن مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَيَعْفُ عَن كَثِيرٍ And whatever, وَمَا أَصَابَكُم مِّن مُصِيبَةٍ Whichever musiba, whichever problem and distress and calamity that you are going through, what's the cause of it? Why is that happening? فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ It's due to what you have done yourselves, due to your actions and due to your sins. وَيَعْفُ عَنْ كَثِيرٍ But Allah forgives so much. Meaning what you might be going through something difficult, something bad, you might perceive it to be. That is because of our own sins. And then, that what you're being punished with isn't, even, isn't everything that you've done. There's so much. Most of it Allah has forgiven. The little bit that's left, that's what you're getting punished for. And so if you look at the Salaf, subhanAllah, if you look at the way they, they think, Right? A calamity will befall them 20 years later. Something would happen. And they would say things like, 20 years ago I backbited somebody. So now Allah is punishing me. Or 15 years ago I did this. And that's why this happened here. Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah, he has a famous incident where, you know, he had photographic memory. But if he looked at something once, he would memorize it. Photographic memory. So much so, they say that he had to, when he would read the book, he'd have to cover one side of the book because otherwise he'll end up memorizing both pages together and he get, he'll get confused. So he covers one side and he focuses on one. So anyways, one day he, he, he found that his memory became a little bit weaker. Okay? Which is a calamity for a person's memory to become weaker. If he's a person memorizing Quran, memorizing a hadith and his memories become weaker, that's a calamity for him. So he goes to his teacher, Waqi'ah. And he goes to his teacher, Waqi'ah. And he asked Waqir, Rahimahullah, why? Why is it that my um, memory is getting weaker? And it became apparent later that Imam Shafi is walking that day and there was a woman and she had like an anklet on her, on, on, on her ankle. And that made some noise, so he just looked naturally at the noise and he saw the ankle and he looked away. So even though it wasn't maybe on purpose, right, he still looked. So Imam Shafi, he, he, he narrates his story. He said, Shakotu in, in, in poetry. Shakotu ila waqi'i in su'a hifzi. Farshadani ila tarki al ma'asi. Waqala inna al ilma nurun wa nurullahi la yuta li asi. He says, Shakotu ila waqi'i. I complain to waqi'i. Why? Su'a hifzi. Due to how weak my memory has become. Farshadani ila tarki al ma'asi. And he guided me to leave off sinning. Waqal, and he said, Fa'alam, no. Inna ilma nurun. That knowledge is light. And this, the, the light of Allah is not given to a, to a sinner. 
Subhanallah. So this calamity that Imam Shafi'i was going through, where his memory became weaker, was due to what? A sin. And it can be argued that maybe it wasn't a sin because he didn't do it intentionally. Never mind the sins that we commit. And that's why, you know, somebody may say, ask, why did Imam Shafi'i go to Waqi specifically? And there's another narration of Waqi'i. Somebody asked him, how do you memorize so much? How is it that when you teach, I never see a book in front of you? And teacher, I'm not talking about five minute reminder, like long, long lessons, in depth lessons. He's got no books in front of him. How, how is it that you got to that level? He said, there's one thing. But if I tell you, are you going to do it? If I tell you this one thing, will you stick to it? And he said, yeah. He said, leave off sinning. Leave off, leave off sinning. So when it comes to the planes of knowledge, the calamity of forgetting your knowledge and not attaining knowledge was due to what? Due to sins. And apply the same principle to any other aspect of life. You have calamities in your provisions, in your wealth, in your businesses, in your jobs, in family relations, in whatever it may be. Think, is there a sin that I have committed that has caused this calamity to befall, befall ourselves? And if there is, then we have to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness sincerely. Whilst regretting the sin that we have done and making a firm intention to never go back to that sin again. And if that sin is pertaining to somebody else's right, then we give that right back to that person. If you've taken his money, we give that money back for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For these type of things, you don't feel, don't feel shy. These are things that you have to do. And that's why if you bring it back to the issue of learning about Islam, yeah, Imam al-Bukhari narrates that Mujahid said two types of people won't learn. The arrogant and the one who is shy. The arrogant because he thinks he knows everything. Yeah, he thinks, no, no, I know this. I've heard this so many times. I know this and so on. He won't learn. Right? And then the one who is shy. Because if he doesn't know, he won't ask. And likewise, in other issues, when things are obligatory, then there's no shyness in those issues. Wallahu la yastahi min al Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not shy away from the, from the truth. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to free us from these trials and tribulations. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us far away from sins. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us beneficial knowledge. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to trust Tread upon the path of seeking knowledge. Subhanakallahumma alhamdulillah ilahi lant astaghfiruka